YouTube's finally done it. They've decided to go full Orwell. And well, let's just start from the beginning before I uh, get into the rather scary reading. So let's get on with this, shall we? So it all started when Jordan Peterson woke up to discover that his YouTube account, for some strange reason, had been removed, terminated, for no real reason. No answers from YouTube, so what did he have to do? He had to basically ask around for help to try and come to some kind of understanding to figure out what the hell had been going on. He has since had his YouTube account reinstated, again, without any real reason. There we go. That was what started. That's what precipitated all this. And then we see this blog post from Google, which outlines their new guidelines, and this is what they have to say an update on our commitment to fight terror content online. So an update to fight terror. Okay, well, immediately there should be alarm bells ringing there. As we know that when governments and corporations try to fight terror, this usually means one thing, a removal of specific rights. A little over a month ago, we told you about the four new steps we're taking to combat terrorist content on YouTube. Better detection and faster removal driven by machine learning. More experts to alert us to content that needs review tougher standards for videos that are controversial but do not violate our policies, and more work in the counter-terrorism space. We wanted to give you an update on these commitments. Better detection and faster removal driven by machine learning. We've always used a mix of technology and human review to address the ever-changing challenges around controversial content on YouTube. We recently began developing and implementing cutting-edge machine learning technology designed to help us identify and remove violent extremism and terrorism-related content in a scalable way. We have started rolling out these tools, and we're already seeing some positive progress. By machine learning, they mean AIs. They basically have an, an AI, or a lot of other AIs, they don't say how many, who are basically going around alongside humans, trying to figure out what is and what is not terrorist and hateful content, which could be anything. You could program that AI to say that anything can mean this. So already, we're having some alarm bells here, and let's not forget, that communication is already an issue between us YouTubers, YouTube and Google. We, Unless we have millions of subscribers and have somebody on the inside, we really don't have any way of contacting them unless we're very lucky. Because as they mentioned before, they don't always use humans and most of the time if you're a little YouTuber such as myself, you're going to get somebody who is just not human. It's a bot talking to you. It then goes on to say, more experts. Of course, our systems are only as good as the data they're based on. Over the past weeks, we've begun working with more than 15 additional expert NGOs and institutions through our Trusted Flagger program, including the Anti-Defamation League, the No Hate Speech Movement, and the Institute for Strategic Dialogue. These organisations bring expert knowledge of complex issues like hate speech, radicalisation and terrorism that will help us better identify content that is being used to radicalise and recruit extremists. We will also regularly consult these experts as we update our policies to reflect new trends and will continue to add more organisations to our network of advisors over time. When the ADL is on your list, you know you're fucked because basically this is some hard left stuff right here. This is very much a social justice company at the very moment, or a movement. And, uh, well, when you've got something called the No Hate Speech Movement, I think we can pretty much uh, determine what they believe. I guess, as V said, it could be worse. It could very much be the Southern Poverty Law Centre. But again, they're going to add more organisations to the network, so the chances of the SBLC and other groups joining that is going to be even more of a risk and they're not going to invite anything that could be potentially a different political stance to the ADL or NHSM. We don't know that do we? Tougher standards will soon be applying tougher treatment to videos that aren't illegal but have been flagged by users as potential violations of our policies on hate speech and violent extremism. If we find that these videos don't violate our policies but contain controversial religious or supremacist content, they will be placed in a limited state. The videos will remain on YouTube behind an interstitial, won't be recommended, won't be monetized, and won't be won't have key features including comments, suggested videos, and likes. We'll begin to roll this new treatment out to videos on desktop versions of YouTube in the coming weeks, and we will bring it to mobile experiences soon thereafter. These new approaches entail significant new internal tools and processes, and will take time to fully implement. Well, there you have it. Full Orwell. They've gone full Orwellian. What this basically means 
is that even though you don't break the rules, you've only potentially broken the rules because somebody thinks you've broken the rules. And this is the problem with these already shit rules. You can technically break anything anybody decides that you've broken. So even though you've not done it, you will be placed in limbo because of what you think and what you believe, even if you haven't broken any rules. This is worrying. This is a free speech issue. They have finally made a stance and said that, yeah, we're not going to be for your right to say what you want to say anymore. That's what they're saying. So I could make a video debunking a feminist point, or I could make a video debunking the alt-right. I could make a video debunking anything, really. And potentially, if I get reported for that, I'll be put in limbo and lose money, lose comments, lose views, because it may be something that they consider hateful or supremacist. And that's my main issues. Those are the things that I don't like. I don't like the fact they're now using AIs, which can be easily manipulated to basically flag anything or to find anything that can be considered hateful to the person who programs it. We've seen this with Candid. And already we can see the people who they're employing as experts to go around looking for this stuff. They too have their own biases and can influence that. And then the fact that they're basically going to be punishing people for not breaking the rules, but for just having the wrong opinions. Yeah, this is great YouTube. This shows a disconnect. This shows the disconnect between us and them. Uh, they don't talk to us, they don't, do not communicate with us, they barely communicate with the biggest people. They've not actually consulted anybody on this. It's supposed to be YouTube. This is supposed to be something that we all should have a say in, right? Well, apparently not. Apparently, we just now have to keel over backwards and be censored, change our content to make it more palatable and sanitised. But you see, unlike Mr. Metica, Jim, I'm not going to just sit there and take it. I refuse. I'm not just going to sit there and pessimistically tell people about this and why it's wrong. I don't know how we're going to solve it. All I know is that community action is needed. We need to write letters, we need to make videos, we need to make sure that all genres are aware of this. We need to make sure that people in enough numbers and in enough of a way can tell YouTube how wrong they are and how this is only going to ruin their business because they seem hell-bent on ruining their business because of ideology. How can they not see that by doing this they'll be forcing people away? There will be when they implement this and people start losing and people start being flagged and all sorts of stuff, whatever it's going to do to us, when this starts happening there's going to be an exodus and once massive YouTubers start moving to vid.me and other platforms Everyone else will soon follow. And then what does YouTube have? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now, that's the only solution I have. Making videos, trying to create a community-wide protest. And by community, I mean the whole of YouTube. Everybody stands to lose from this. Everybody. So, that's all I've got. But if you've got anything else, if anybody's got anything to share about potential solutions, apart from maybe a mass exodus or making videos and trying to have some kind of protest, please do share it in the comments. And until next time, I'll see you all later. <laughs> I'm sorry.